It's not a lesson on ideas and opinions. It's not even a lesson to convict sinners. Because it's a lesson to my dear little children. It's an intimate family letter. It is a guide to know what lies ahead and a warning of things that could hinder a person's walk with God. It is written as an intimate letter to the family. The first section is the family and the father in which the religious and secular world are defined and children are warned against false teachers. This second chapter of 1 John explains that worldliness and by the way, that word is not even in the Bible. <laughs> it's a matter of the heart in its desire for temporal things overwhelming the desire for God. Is that pretty well it? Just yeah. tell what world, worldliness is. The word worldly is in the Bible. And uh, I think the meaning is about the same. It's a matter of the heart. Right. And it's desire for temporal things more than the <coughs> desire for God. First John 2 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Uh, while we go through this lesson, you may have. You may have some comments that you want to include, um, and it may be some that I have already included. <laughs> but uh, but if you do, uh, I will I will ask for your comments a little bit later on. I've got a little blank piece of paper there. I don't want you to write on it yet, but a little bit later I'm going to ask you to write down. Uh, what is meant by not of this world or love of the world or things that are considered love of the world that you would consider love of the world not that somebody else would but that you would think that this this thing is worldly or this thing might take you away from God whatever you feel like you can write you don't have to sign your name for it, to it but I'm even going to take them up later and uh, you can write on them any time, but you might want to wait till we decide what love of the world is. <laughs> <clears throat> Through these words, love not the world, John wrote, the, the people that John wrote to were so well acquainted with divine things and had all tasted the powers of the world to come. He was not writing to people who did not know the Lord. Yet John recognizes they could be drawn aside by sensible things. Don't people love to be logical? Don't people love to explain things in the way they understand them without uh, thinking about God is so far ahead of us? And so we don't have the infinite minds to define what God does or doesn't do or reasons for him. Uh, we think something is logical and sensible, and it's not always wrong to look at the sensible. But when, when, we, when the sensible is contrary to what God says, who do you, whose word do you take? Right. Your, your own feeble <laughs> reasoning right. or God's. Right. So uh, that, that's a part of the attitude of the mind. If we think our opinions <laughs> and our ideas are based on logic, then God must be wrong? No, that's, that's an error. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you think, if it's not compatible with the word of God, it's worldly. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost saw it was necessary to caution these against the love of the world the inordinate desire of earth, earthly things. Remember, he, he, in his letter, he's saying to my dear children, <coughs> to my dear children. Uh, it's a father to child thing. 
You know, the Father shows authority. The, the Father shows a knowledge and a wisdom that he needs to impart to his children. So the Holy Ghost, as we know, the Holy Ghost inspired the writing of the Word of God, the Bible. Holy Ghost saw it necessary to caution these against the love of the world, the inordinate desire of earthly things. And uh, the world in this chapter is defined, and this is a complete definition, by lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, uh, all of you that's got scriptures, I want you to read those scriptures now. I'm going to start with Brother Paul. First Peter 4 and 3. For the time past of, of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquets, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but, but live according to God in the spirit. Okay, would you like to comment on that, Brother you know, it's You know, people think it, it's strange. I like that verse 4. <coughs> people think it's strange that you run with them, that you run not with them to the same excess. Uh, when we, when we try to reason with this world or explain to them why we don't take partake of, of things, they think it's mighty strange. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nobody enjoys feeling like you're strange, <laughs> you know, for certain. But, uh, but the world is good at making you feel that way. And it is strange to them because they don't have the Spirit of God and they don't understand. And it's a, it's a, it's really a blessing to be strange. Right. <laughs> exactly. In that sense, exactly. it really is. Because mm -hmm. it shows a distinction. Right. Okay, uh, yours. Okay. Now, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And he was referring to Israel in the wilderness and how mm -hmm. what comes to my mind specifically is they wanted a king like all the other nations. They wanted to be like oh, yeah. all the other nations, you know. And when that is what's in your heart, you're going to get in trouble. And they did, you know, mm -hmm. because the Lord is looking for a peculiar people. My daughter, she talked, called me today, and she's talking. Um, one of the church members at the church, their daughter, she's got two little girls at the other age, but they don't attend church there. But her and Candace have made friends and they go shopping and went shopping today and those little girls get to wear bracelets and they paint their nails and and Ella, when she's around them, for some reason that seems to entice her, you know. I guess because she's not around them a lot and she don't see it. So she sees it on them, you know. And Candace was saying, you know, how hard it is, you know, to try to explain to her why she can't do things at age three, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I told Candace, I said, it's not always easy to be different. Mm -hmm. But that's what God has called us to be, mm -hmm. is different, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I just told Candace, I said, you've got to understand that if you give in now, you're just opening the door, which I don't think Candace it even thinks that way. But you know how the enemy works, Sister Marla, just like with Israel, you know, and wanting to be like other nations, you know, and thinking that what harm is it? Mm -hmm. But if it's outside of the mind and the will of God, then it, we don't need to be partake of it, you know? Well, it would be much easier for her when she's older to say no to the more the stronger things of the world that kids are going to be doing. Yeah, that's true. She can say no at three years old with Papa. She can say no to dances and boys and who knows what else. <laughs> By the time she's 13, 14. That's true. I remember when I was a little girl, my mother and daddy had a birthday party for me. 
and uh, one little girl bought a little necklace and bracelet set mm -hmm. and gave it to me. And I just opened it up and put them on. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't supposed to, but I opened it. And it felt so good. <laughs> I thought that was pretty. <laughs> and uh, Daddy let me keep it on until the end of the party. And then he called me over to him. And he said, Betty, don't you think you need to take that off now? And I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I don't know ever even what happened to it. But I was very willing to take it off because I was already feeling condemnation. I mean, even though I had just wonderfully put it on, you know. Just how the devil works, huh? Yeah, that's true. I take uh, Sister Sutton. Um, Colossians um, 3 and 2. He says, Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. And you know, a lot of times it is hard for little children to get tangled up, you know, and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. say, well, well, they do it. How come I can't do it? You know, I'm, mm -hmm. you know they're, not, they're not any better than me. They don't understand uh, a lot of times especially at that age, you know, two or three years old. But I, I can remember when we was going to school and, and, you know, everybody else would partake and stuff like that, and we didn't. And, you know, they would, they would make fun of us and call us names, you know, because we weren't partaking in it. I said, well, I, I'm not living for the things of, on the, of the world. I'm living to make heaven my home. I'm living for God to make heaven my home. They didn't understand things like that because, you know, they're not taught like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but uh, I, it didn't bother me for them to make fun of me. I didn't, you know, it didn't bother me at all. I didn't care because I, I you know, I just couldn't partake in things like that. I didn't have no desire to partake in it, you know, anyhow. But, uh, you know, because uh, I was, uh, you know, I was proud of my raising, you know, my parents that thought enough about me to raise me, you know, for the Lord. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't bother me, you know, when people would uh, ridicule me, you know, talk talked about me, you know, for not doing some of the things they did. Uh, it didn't bother me at all. It just, it just didn't faze me because my heart was set on affections of love and not on things of the world. I know, I know, uh, as we talk about this, I know that physical appearance usually is the first thing that we think of, but that's not the only sign mm -hmm. of uh, love and not the world. Uh -huh. Sometimes the person <coughs> can have that attitude of loving the world, and you can't tell it by looking at them. <laughs> you just can't tell it by looking at them at all. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I was like 10 years old, uh, I, was, I was told that I was ugly. And uh, my mother tried to make me pretty. She tried to make me look like uh, what's that little girl's name, Shirley Campbell? <laughs> With the goodness that you see. So a lot of my life was trying to pursue some beauty somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I had this long, unmanageable hair, and they call me long hair Joe. So, and uh, of course, styles were different then. Now the girls have long hair and all they have to do is wash it and divide it in three parts, put one part here, one part here, one part down the back, and they're okay. But then, you're supposed to do something with your hair, and you know, the thing where it's kind of curled up in the back and a little, little roll, and every hair in place, and I worked real hard at it, because I felt like that was all I had going for me. But, but you know what, I married a handsomest guy in Florida, so <laughs> that didn't hurt anything. But but the fact that I was reaching for something that was actually pride. And I wanted to, to look like other people, you know. I wanted, I wanted to feel pretty. I wanted to feel attractive. And so I was trying everything I could to, I was reaching for that. And uh, it, it became quite important to me. And I didn't realize how trivial it was until I got older. But it did make me try harder in a lot of areas in my life, which I probably wouldn't have if I didn't. I, you know, I practiced hard on the piano, so at least I'd have a piano playing on my side. <laughs> but I remember when my husband asked me to marry him, I 
was trying to tell him, you know, what assets I was going to bring into the marriage. <laughs> I said, I make my own clothes. I've got enough shoes to last me 10 years. And I play the piano. And he looked at me and said, piano players are a dime a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it can take a lot of different routes when you're pursuing things that is really not God's ideal for you. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to say that. I'm glad I, I thought I'd say well in my life, but it helped me. <laughs> anyway, okay, Brother Nick. Romans 12, 12, and Ephesians 6, 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want to say something about that? No? Okay, that's all right. Uh, Brother Caleb? Um, John 17 and 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. What you want to tell us? <laughs> well, I was going to say I didn't have a comment, but I did read in 19 it says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, and they also might be sanctified through the truth. And um, first thing my mind goes to is the fact that um, Christ was tempted with the same thing as we were against us with, and we have a way through that that we don't have to live as rules to sin. We have, you know, sanctification. And okay. Uh, Brother Chris. 1 John 4 and 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. This uh, reminds me a lot what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, if, uh, if they've heard me and they obey me, they'll obey you also. And if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you also. If we are speaking in such a way that the world is applauding us and holding us up and thinking well of us, we might ought to check what we're saying. Mm -hmm. We might ought to look a little deeper into the things that, that are going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because anything that we do that the world commends, mm -hmm. that means God is condemning. Right. The, the world, the way the world <coughs> looks at things, I, I think of uh, Jeremiah. I love, love the prophet Jeremiah. I hate what he had to do, and I hate the way the people responded to him. He was speaking to the people of God, the things of God. Mm -hmm. He was warning them of what, of what was going to happen because they had become of the world. They were more concerned with their worldly issues, with their, well, for that matter, with their false gods, mm -hmm. than they were with their service to the Lord. And, and something that we've been discussing the house a little bit about is uh, uh, some things we think of, we don't think of idolatry the way that we should in the world today. When we think of idolatry, 99.9% .9 of Christians will say, I don't have a little gold statue in my house. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not an idolater. I, I, don't, I don't practice idolatry because I don't have a Buddha in my house. I don't, have a, I don't have a Ganesh statue in my house or, house or anything like that. So I, I don't practice idolatry. But we fail to realize that idolatry is anything that, that, that comes in between us and our service to the Lord. I, th I think we might have touched on it in Bible study here a little bit ago. But... I'm sorry, I lost my mind for a second. If we get to the end of the day and we realize that we haven't spent any time in prayer, we haven't spent any time in God's Word, whatever it is that we did do during the day, mm -hmm. that's an idol. That's an idol. We've placed it ahead of God because the things that are important to us, we'll do those first. We'll make sure that they get done. We'll make sure that they don't get overlooked. We'll be sure that we don't just kind of 
get, do them a little mm -hmm. bit. It just I'll, I'll I'll get I'll get that when I'm ready for it. I'll get that if I have time. I'll I'll pray when I have time. When I'm done doing this other stuff. When I'm done watching my favorite television show. When I'm done hanging out with my friends. When I'm done doing what whatever it is my my favorite hobby or whatever. Then I'll I'll pray when I have time. I'll I'll read the Bible when I have time. What that means is the Bible is not important. That's it. What that means is our relationship with God isn't important. Why? Because we're of the world. The things of the world are far more important to us. And so we push what's less important to the end of the day. And so when we get to the end of the day, we, I know I've been guilty of it, thinking, oh, I've not picked up my Bible once today. Why? Something had my attention. Something got my mind off of things, got me off track, and kept me from doing the things that I needed to do. And I, the Lord help me. Help me to recognize when I'm allowing anything that this world has to come between you and me. I don't want anything that this world has to offer to come between me and the Lord. That's a worldly attitude. At, the, the desire for temporal things overwhelming the desire for God. And, and that's exactly what this verse is talking about here. It is, uh, they that are of the world speak... They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. Mm -hmm. If we're speaking things of God, if we're serving God as we should, the world isn't going to commend us. The world isn't going to think highly of us. The world isn't going to say, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. The world is going to look down on us. And the world won't be attractive to us either. No. And they won't understand us, and we won't understand them. I... I, I know that Wendy's talked about some of her family. Just She doesn't understand why they do the things they do. I, I know people. I don't understand why they do the things they do. But I look back on my own life and I understand. Because the things of God aren't important. Because if the things of God were important, then I wouldn't have done the things that I used to do. In the 14th verse, it says, uh, I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Uh, covetousness, I was reading <laughs> and realized, is the predominant vice of old age. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I noticed that. You fathers love not the world. These are things that are in the world. It's profits, it's pleasures, honors, they have the strongest allurement for the youth. So the fathers need to be able to teach the youth against, you know, entertaining these things. Wherefore, ye young men, little children, and babes, love not the things of this world. Let those hearts abide faithful to God, who have taken him for their portion. If all that is in the world Let's go back. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. The love of the Father is not in him that loves the world. The love of God and the love of earthly things are not compatible. Did you know that? <coughs> you did, didn't you? If you give place to the love of the world, the love of God cannot dwell in you. If you don't have his love, you don't have the peace. And you don't have the holiness of God and no heaven, hope of heaven. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. All that is in the world, all that it can boast of, all that it can promise, isn't that something? It's only sen sensual gratification that is very temporary. And even this promise it cannot fulfill. So that it's warmest, votarious, and this is a person who takes a religious vow. And there are a lot of people that are very religious that are, have the love of the world in their heart. 
Gentiles and set the love of God, but they call themselves religious. They, they're the ones that complain loudest of the disappointment in serving God. Oh, it's hard, it's drudgery, it's sacrificing. We have to give up everything. <coughs> what? <laughs> give up everything? For all that is in the world, all that he can boast of, and all that he's promised, it can't give you anything more than temporal pleasure. Right. The lust of the flesh, sensual, and impure desires. Now, the flesh, the natural person, there are that desires that are built into us that are not wrong mm -hmm. until it's reached in the wrong spirit or the wrong spirit controls it. Sexual and impure desires which seek their gratification in sex, strong drink, Delicious choice of foods, and we don't like that one, do we? <laughs> they complain uh, excessive without restraint, and the such like. We complain about not being able to do this or do that or whatever. People that do complain about living holy, they can't live holy because they don't have the love of God in their hearts. And this talks about the delicious choice of foods. I didn't think anything too much about that until I was watching the, the Food Channel one day. And they had a, a ingredient that they were using that costed 900 and some dollars an ounce. And they were berating the ones who were cooking because they didn't make it the whole center of their menu. I never knew food costs like that. But we can let food be our whole desire and everything revolve around it. That's the reason it's so hard for people to fast because they got their mind on the food and what they want to eat and everything in their life just about revolves around it. I was so surprised uh, when I went on this 10 day fast, <laughs> what I told you about one time that uh, I had so much time <laughs> to do something because I started counting up the hours that I just gave to, to, gave to preparing food, shopping for food, eating food, cleaning up after eating, and all this kind. I mean, it was hours and hours that I had spent on that. But when it come to praying, you know, squeeze it in here and squeeze it in there, and, and that uh, brought conviction to my heart. Especially after I realized I was looking forward to eating after I got off this fast. So the next one I went on, I tried to do it pleasing to the Lord. Because I knew he hadn't chose that first one. This morning I was here uh, a couple of months ago. We uh, went out to eat one night and it was my idea to, to go to this new place. Uh, I wanted something good. Uh, I wanted to enjoy it. Good meal, something different. And we went to this place, and I knew it was a little, maybe a little more expensive than where we normally eat. But we went in and ordered our food, and it was a little expensive, and they brought it to us, and it was just, it was okay. You know, it was, it was pretty good food, but the Lord convicted me over that dinner that night. Oh. I've never had that happen. But, but the Lord convicted me over spending that amount of money on a meal. Did that surprise you? Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. Because we, we don't think about that. Right. We, we just really don't think about it. The lust of the eyes. Inordinate desires, after finery of every kind, gaudy dress, splendid houses, superb furniture, mm -hmm expensive equip equipment, trappings, and decorations of all sorts. Now, uh, just because you pay more for something than somebody else does for your, your clothes don't mean that, that that's your love of the world. It could be love of the world if you pay the less. You might be so proud of that fact that that becomes sin unto you. You know, you can go excessive either direction. You can. 
just to make yourself feel good or sacrifice you think to make yourself look good or just to make yourself feel like that you're sacrificing. The Lord likes obedience. And uh, he doesn't look at sacrifice like we do all the time, does he? If he wants us to sacrifice, he'll let us know it. <laughs> I really believe that. And, uh, but he won't force us to obey him. He gives us the opportunity to obey him. And we do it through love. Uh, and the pride of life. Hunting after honors, titles, and pedigrees. Boasting of ancestry. I had a first cousin send me an email. Bless his heart. He found out that he and his sister's uh, DNA don't match each other. And he was trying to find out who was his daddy. But he started out hunting to try to find out his family tree, I guess. And uh, he was... He was doing it because he wanted to boast of where he came from and he was trying to trace his family tree. And I'm not saying it's wrong to trace your family tree, but uh, just just to do it to boast of your ancestry, it can it can consume you. I have a another second cousin in High Point and she has got so wrapped up in tracing her history and trying to find a hero in her history that her mind is absolutely on nothing else. And she'll write and send me pictures and ask questions about her ancestry. And this is all that's on her mind is what her family is. Well, she is ignoring God in her life now, and she's concentrating all her energy on this. Hunting after honors, honors, titles, pedigrees, ancestry, family connections, great offices and positions, an honorable name droppers, honorable acquaintances. <laughs> Don't you look me around somebody's like some drop in a name that they know. <laughs> I know this person, you know. It's not of the father. Nothing of these inordinate attachments either comes from or leads to God. They are of this world. Here they begin, flourish, and end. They deprive the mind, dwarf it from divine pursuits and render it utterly incapable of spiritual enjoyment. Some people just fret themselves to death over earthly things, and so much so that they forget <coughs> they belong to the Lord and they're bought with a price. Uh, the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time it is ever heard that an antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. When we get into this part, I'm going to ask Sister William and Sister Sutton to come here and help me out a little bit. I've got this wonderful little crown. <laughs> And, and I'm going to let y'all decide who you think needs to have it. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you things about them you know, which, which are not true. I mean, some of them may be true. <laughs> <laughs> She's here when the doors open and stays to the block. And she she does everything the pastor asks her to do. And uh, she really <laughs> <laughs> And she is just a, a blessing. She goes and she helps people and uh, just really, you know, is there for them and all. And uh, Sister Paula here, she is a faithful church member. She sit here every day that the door's open. She's right here, and she'll offer to help you. And, uh, and you know, I asked her why she did this. This is not, this is a story now. 
I asked why she did this, and she said so people could think well of her, and so people would have confidence in her. I asked Sister Sutton, why do you do these things? Why, why are you so, so faithful? She said, because I love the Lord, and I want to serve him. So then uh, Sister Fuller, you know what she did? She raised $500 for missions. And then she gives in every mission offering that comes by. Well, it act, actually, every plate that passes, she's got something to go in it. <laughs> and I asked her why she did that. And she said, well, she said, they're going to honor everybody that gives the largest offering. And I, you know, I think I will give an offering. I've got it to give, so I'm going to give it. And Sister Sutton, she works for missions. She raises all she can and she cooks. And, uh, when the offering plate, she always tries to give an offering. She always raises a hundred dollars for missions and world mission fund. And I asked her why she did that. She said, because I love the Lord and I want other people to know the Lord. So, and then I talked to Sister Fulia. You get hurt wrong. You are just getting that one. I'm sorry, I feel like a little water. <laughs> And I found out that, that she'll, uh, she'll find out about a poor family and don't have anything to eat and don't have anything to work. She'll, she'll take food to them and, and uh, she'll take something, you know, to them to wear and all. And I asked her why she did it. And uh, she said, well, um, those people need it, and uh, they they told me that they need it, and they made me feel guilty for not helping, so I decided I'd hate it. And, and Sister Sutton, I talked to her, and she was she was taking somebody some food right there, and in fact, she brought it to me. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and, and she found out somebody didn't have enough clothes to wear, and she went in her own wardrobe and got her. Got and she, didn't, <laughs> she didn't bring that to me because I knew she was. But I said, well, why, why did you do that? Because I love those people. And uh, they they were needy. And, and the Lord said I should help supply that need. And I, I just love them. Okay, now. Who, the the, crowd? who, <laughs> who needs to get the crown? Sister Bullock does because she's needy and she needs to have the crown. <laughs> Just found out. If you don't give it to her, she might get on you. Okay, does anybody else, anybody else have a comment about who, who should get the crown? Just tweet. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay. I was going to say the same thing. She's my character. She needs to get the crown because this is all that she'll get. <laughs> and so she gets the crown. <laughs> you as strangers and pilgrims of same from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. reason he says strangers is because the people were scattered in different countries and where they were living they were strangers and at the same, same time people of God are strangers in this world and so he addresses them as strangers and pilgrims. You, you don't live here. This is not your home. You're strangers and you're pilgrims and you're on your way to heaven. So don't get so caught up in the world that you, you lose sight of heaven. 
Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, this, the people had to live among Gentiles, but not to listen to them and not to adopt to their way of life. They didn't need to change their lives to fit the culture of the Gentiles. But whereas they speak against you, and this is what we talked about a while ago, the criticism from the world. As evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers, and for the praise of them that do well, for so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Don't use your status as a Christian to escape anything of the world, of, of the government, or the world, or the king, or whoever is ruling. And uh, we're told over in Romans, you know, to uh, respect and honor the rulers, the worldly rulers, because God set government in place, and uh, it's to a Christian's favor, not that they would favor the Christian, but to obey the law of the land and not use being a Christian to be disobedient mm -hmm. to the law. As long as the law doesn't interfere or, you know, not compatible with God, with, with holiness. Uh, we don't have to do wrong things Just in order to be under the law. Well, but we are supposed to, for instance, um, I'll use, um, I don't know what I'll use, <laughs> but sometimes uh, we get uh, called in for doing something that would be against the law, and uh, the first thing we say, like, but I'm a Christian, you know, can't you give me an allowance on this, or can't you kind of bypass this, or whatever. Uh, that's not pleasing to God for us to use our position or our self as a Christian and say, well, you're supposed to give me favors, you know, because of that. I know of people who go to businesses and think they're supposed to get favors because they're a Christian. Well, uh, actually, we do get a lot of favors because we're Christians. Yes, we do. Uh, and when I went to Russia, they had just opened they just tore down the iron curtain and let people come in. And uh, they were anxious for Christians to come into the country because Christians were the best employees that they, they could have in the country. Uh, actually, uh, divorce and suicide and uh, drinking was the main problems in Russia. And Christians didn't do all these things. And so they wanted the Christians in there because they, they, they lived good lives and they were honest and had integrity. Well, I think the world in general, and we're not just a United States people, but the world in general respects a person who is truly a Christian and not using it for a cloak of liberty and not using it to get favors from others. But to be honest, to have integrity, and to portray Christ in our lives is what we're supposed to be doing. As servants of God, <clears throat> as the Jews pretended, they were a free people. You know, they, we're the children of Abraham. Are you supposed to look up to us and, hey, that's pride. Mm -hmm. And we're not supposed to do that either, are we? Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm in church of God. You you're supposed to look up to me. I'm, I'm holier than you. You can't have holiness and pride together. You That's just right. can't do it. They, they were free. They pretended to be a free people and owed allegiance to God alone. 
Hence, they were continually rebelling against the Roman government to which God had subjected them because of their rebellions against him. Thus they used their liberty for a cloak of maliciousness for a pretext of rebellion, and by it endeavor to vindicate <coughs> their seditious and rebellious conduct. That's, that's, I think somebody mentioned it Sunday about um, getting out and protesting and carrying these signs and all this kind of stuff. That's, that's not, you know, we, well, if you might say so, don't say nothing. But I, <laughs> I don't really think that that's what God wants us to do. You can't carry a sign that says God hates you and at the same time say God loves you. It don't work together like that. These, God didn't call us to march and protest and all this kind of stuff. He called us to preach the gospel. And that's all. Not, not ourselves, not anything else but to preach the gospel. These people that Peter was walking, or not Peter, John was talking to, were free from sin and Satan, but they were the servants of God, bound to obey him, and he had made it their duty to obey the civil magistrate. They served God by submitting to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. We don't want the Lord taking blame for our wrongdoing, do we? Right. And we certainly don't want to do that. Right. And in Titus 2.12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We can do that. If we couldn't do that, the Lord wouldn't have told us to. Right. He's instructed us as children are instructed. Christ is a great teacher. And in order to learn, we must become his disciples. Must put ourselves under his tuition and learn of him. <coughs> Denying ungodliness, all things contrary to God, whatever, would lead us to doubt his being. Let me read that again. All things contrary to God, whatever, would lead us to doubt his being. Now that's what the devil tries to get us to do. If we, he said if we can get rid of God, man doesn't have any accountability to anybody. You know, do what he wants to because he's not accountable to anybody. So when people want to sin, what they first have to do is get rid of the concept of God. Right. Because you, you're going to feel it when you sin if you still believe in God. Right. But if you get rid of the concept of God, then go ahead and sin or do anything else you want to. There is no law. There is no accountability. There is nothing. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, even morals are not established without God. There has to be God. Well, it makes me think of Jesus when he told his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Uh -huh. They didn't understand what he was talking about. And he even said in another place, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You know? And they they were a religious sect. Yeah, very religious. And they said they had a religious covering, but they had, had an impure heart. Mm -hmm. Everything they did, they did for all for the, the wrong reasons. They did. It was to they did the right thing for the wrong reason. You know, and like I just, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think, you know, a lot of times those scriptures will stand out in my mind, and I just think, you know, Lord, help us. Because I don't know that they saw themselves, Sister Marlowe, for what they were. No. Maybe they were sincere in all that they did and did not realize. They were children of Abraham. Yeah. And sometimes I wonder if we even know our own hearts. They didn't think they did that. 
they expected to go to heaven for what they had done, and uh -huh. they expected and everybody else to see them. <laughs> but you know, there, there's danger in, I believe, a, a sincere heart can recognize in his own life when there is an alternative motive. Mm -hmm. um, you ever seen someone that everything they did, I mean, everybody in the room could tell that they've got a personal, they've got a motive here. Mm -hmm. you know? They have their own agenda. The Bible says they, they fasted, but they disfigured their faces that they may appear mm -hmm. unto men yeah. to fast. Yeah, that's wrong. You know, <laughs> so. Chris? Jesus called them blind leaders of the blind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they had been become so blinded by their pride that they couldn't see that their behavior was not only contrary to the will of God, and not, not only contrary to the law that they were supposed to be upholding, but it was contrary to the will of God, that it was displeasing to God. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see that. Jesus said, if you say that you're blind, I'll take away your sin. You, you don't have any sin. But because you say that you see, yeah, your sin understand. remains. And that goes right back to what you were saying about, uh, I just try to be like, as quick as I can. I know I talk a lot. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and what, Jesus, what you said earlier um, about them doing these things, I thought about how they said, we be the seed of Abraham and that we're never in bondage to any man. Uh -huh. That's what the Pharisees said to Jesus. Yeah. And during the time that they said that, they were in bondage under the Roman government. They were completely blind. They could not see the things that were absolutely clear. They couldn't understand that even as they said those words, they were wrong because they were in bondage. They had been in bondage multiple times. And at that point, they were even in bondage. And they were so blinded by their pride because of their good behavior that they couldn't see it. They were still walking around in the marketplace beating on their chest. Look at me, look who I right. am. Yeah. And I thought they were doing right for it. Disappointing. They wore the garments that were supposed to prove who they were. And they walked around <laughs> letting people know who they were. Yeah. And, uh, you have to get careful. That's almost like daring God not to send you to hell. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm perfect. You can't send me to hell. Yeah. The, <laughs> denying ungodliness. All things contrary to God, which would lead us to doubt his being, deny any of his essential attributes. When we're talking about attributes of God. We can't have the attributes of God in us and love of the world at the same time. His providence or government of the world and his influence on the souls of men. You don't have to worry about what's going on in the world because we know God's in control. It's not who we put in, it's who God allows in. And if he uses your votes and impresses you to vote for certain people, that's you and him. You know, I, I can't say you're supposed to vote or you're not supposed to vote, but if you do, you need to get, seek the guidance of the Lord in whatever your actions are. Amen. If, you just part, if you vote just part of you might be out of the will of God That's and right. do the wrong thing. I see. You, might, you might be the cause of putting the wrong person in mm -hmm. God didn't want there. And it's we don't want to be guilty of disobedience to the Lord. The government of this world is not my government. He, he will guide that. us if we'll allow him to. Right. Amen. Everything <clears throat> which is opposed to his true worship, theoretical and practice, practical atheism, dietic, dietic, as I can't even say the word, <laughs> talking about gods, and irreligion in general, everything of that sort is opposed to true worship. Mm -hmm. We don't go through rituals and all this kind of stuff in worship of the Lord. Our worship is supposed to be true, honest, and before God in humility and in holiness. Worldly love, such desires, affections, and appetites as men are governed by those who have their portion in life and live without God in the world, including gluttony, drunkenness, lasciviousness, anger, malice, revenge, immoderate love of riches, power and fame. We should live soberly, having every temper, appetite, and desire 
under the government of reason and reason itself, under the government of the Spirit of God. Okay, I want you to take little pieces of paper and write down something you think is of the world. You do not get a little piece of paper, I'll give you a piece. Did everybody else got a piece of paper? What is an unworldly thing? What? What is a worldly thing? Worldly, yeah, what did I say? Unworldly. Render to every man his due, and your no, this is righteous living. Render to every man his due, injuring no person in his body, mind, reputation, or property, doing unto all as we would that they would do unto us, and filling up the duties of the particular stations in which it has pleased God to fix us, committing no sin, omitting no duty. There's three words that include our duties to God, to our neighbor, and to ourselves. We are to live soberly in respect to ourselves. This is in the love of God. Righteously in respect to our neighbor. Godly or piously in respect to our maker. We live soberly, righteously, and piously. You know, these things, the earthly things, they don't matter when we realize that the world will pass away. He that doeth the will of God abide forever. So what is more important? Loving the world or loving God? And I'm going to Stop right here because we're going to do something else and we'll just continue this in our next lesson. Um, because we go into false teachers. Okay, everybody have your something written down that you feel to feel like is, is of the world or worldly? Brother Caleb, would you take up the papers for me? and you tell me which category it is. This, these things are of the world. These three should take care of everything. Lust, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You know, right now that my house doesn't have any waste baskets in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pleasures of the flesh, wealth, worldly popularity, that's one we didn't even think about too much, is it? And idols. Uh, what bucket, what waste basket do you think this needs to go into? Pride of life? Okay. We're going to get a little bit of something. <laughs> Okay, politics, lust, lying, pride, where should this go? Put it up. 
Terrible. Okay. But one and one and one other. Politics, which one of that goes into? Right of life. Right of life. We gonna get rid of this stuff, ain't we? Praise the Lord. Okay. Lying and pride. Should that be split? Flash, I guess probably. What? Put it in the flash. Yeah, let's do it. Here it goes. I'm too glad to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing. Praise the Lord, we got one perfect. Here's another one. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is interesting. So, sports, internet, social media, and cell phones. Where should they go? Cry to life. Life of fire. Like a fireball. <laughs> what is it? The flesh or the eyes or the pride of life? The pride of life. Pride of life. Or all of the above. Yeah. It could be. Unless you get on the internet. Be any of the above. <laughs> okay, looking for loopholes. Where that need to go? Flush. Is this the plot one I have? Yeah, sure enough. The lesson eyes don't have anything yet. Yeah. You're looking for loopholes. Look at yeah, the lesson eyes don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. Has to be the lesson eyes, don't it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In con in con <laughs> not contentment, I don't know how to say that. Uh, joyless and without peace. Where where should that go? In content is it discontent. 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 No joy and no peace. Where's that go? All of them. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of all of it. Get rid of it one way or the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going to set them on fire, you take them outside. Huh. Oh, no. <laughs> you get nervous. Okay. How one looks. Physical appearance. Where's that go? Uh, yeah. Pride of life. Pride of life. Eyes. Pride, eyes. Yeah, <laughs> looks. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Position, prestige, need bigger and better. Oh, God. Uh, Something that distracts <laughs> us from our service to God. Yeah, All of them. All of them. All of them. All of it. All of it. Now you see how the world in this is all of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, not once is it saying how a person looks holy because you can look holy and not be holy. Mm -hmm. You can be a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. uh, but a person who really loves God does all to please Him. I read this little story. I probably told you this before. This uh, young girl was going out with her friends, and uh, she was. They were at one one of the others' houses, and they decided to uh, go to a place that this girl was not supposed to go to. And um, they, she told them she couldn't go. And they said, "What? Are you afraid that your daddy will hurt you if you go?" She said, no, I'm afraid I'll hurt my dad if I go. Mm -hmm. That's what the spirit of love mm -hmm. the Lord is in us. Right. If we're, if we're going to love the Lord, we've got to put down everything that's mm -hmm. in the world that mm -hmm. can detract us from <coughs> serving God. Right. And uh, as we go, I thought we'd get through this chapter tonight, but we're not because the next part of it is when false teachers come and they 
uh, try to deny that Christ is of God mm -hmm. and teach them something that's completely wrong to make them not care if they live holy or not. Right. If you don't believe in God, and if you don't believe the word, it's not important for you to live holy. I mean, why, why do that? <clears throat> but if we love God sincerely with our whole mind, right. heart, and soul, then we want to please him and not do anything that hurts our Heavenly Father. Right. God bless you. And Brother Fulham, I'm going to ask you to close our Bible study with prayer. Lord in heaven.